Um, there's a lot of interest around cloud projects and, you know, and tongue in cheek, some, some may view that, well, if I move all my data out of my data center, then I got green and I got rid of all my storage and I'm green and it's someone else's problem, but that, that's not the case. Um, we see a large amount of data still uh, continue to be um, added into the data center, into data center processing, and putting uh, all the data out in the cloud is not going to work for um, applications that have latency dependencies and, and, and so on. Um, a lot of organizations continue to grow their data. Um, based upon a, a poll that we did at, a, at the Storage Networking World Conference, we see that there's a lot of um, organizations that are managing about 500 uh, terabytes of data. Most of that's typically going to be in office productivity and structured data. We start getting into the uh, petabyte level and exabyte is when you start getting into unstructured data. So if you're like a cloud service provider, like a, I'm a Yahoo or someone like that, you can be over an exabyte. Or if you're NASA or, or like the National Weather Service, you, you have a lot of data that you're, you have accumulated and, and you're keeping in storage. Not all of it's online. When you start getting into those uh, large uh, stores, you, there's a lot of uh, tape that is being used. But uh, it just provides a baseline that, uh, you know, where we were about five years ago, we were looking at about 100 terabytes was the benchmark. So we're still continuing to see exponential growth of data that's being accumulated and held by organizations for various reasons. In the commercial sector, it's to drive the business, it's to do uh, business analytics. Uh, there's some uh, uh, compliance requirements that are out there as well. So it, even given consideration as you move forward in looking at any type of green IT project and you're going to do a refresh and storage, even though you can get like more capacity per dollar uh, spent, you still have to take into account you know, what your continued uh, growth trends will be and you'll still have to probably um, overbuy for capacity. And um, there, there are some techniques to factor into your decisions to become greener as you go through these uh, acquisitions. So aside from you know, having a black box and having a, a rating and whether at a future point in time it's going to be rated as Energy Star and it has its metrics, what else can you um, look to to get information about the whole storage architecture? So there's a lot of um, decisions that can be ma made in the data center for selecting technologies that will save uh, disk spindles, which in turn then reduce the power consumption. Um, there's several places where you can find information for best practices for the configuration on the SNI website, the Green uh, Grid Data Center Maturity Model and Data Center Design Guide, European Union Data Center Code of Conduct, and, and then from different manufacturers of technology. So just uh, briefly to illustrate the point of on the far left side, if you have one terabyte of data, as you go through a number of these different activities in your organization for data protection, replication, disaster recovery, compliance, and so forth, you can end up with five to ten times the amount of um, capacity needed to store that, that one unit of, of data. Um, using uh, different type of uh, configuration techniques of changing, you know, uh, using RAID 5 or 6 instead of RAID 1.0, or using uh, thin provisioning or compression and so forth, you can reduce that footprint down by about half. Um, and, and so this is more or less a, a checklist of technologies that can be used in your data center uh, today without necessarily buying new equipment that can affect your, your total fo footprint as well as uh, reduce your energy uh, consumption. <coughs> 